Hey YouTube, I want to share with you a couple of new patients that uh, I just saw yesterday. And uh, it's interesting because they both got terrible reports. Terrible from the standpoint that they're in bad shape. But um, the good news I always tell them when I find out that they're really bad shape is they have the most potential for improvement. In other words, if you're really failing at something and you can find out how to correct it, you, you stand to, to benefit the most from this correction as opposed to people that really are already um, knocking it out of the ballpark. So these two individuals will start with uh, individual, individual one. First of all, they're, they're both topies, okay? So they have pretty small uh, size waist. If you looked at them, they, in fact, you'd say, oh, well, they're in good shape. <laughs> Well, if you looked inside, you'd find out that they're mostly all this white stuff here, all the weight is visceral fat, okay? So this visceral fat, again, is highly inflammatory. I don't wanna go into um, how bad it is, but if you don't know about visceral fat, you just need to Google visceral fat, comma, dangers, visceral fat, comma, bad, visceral fat, comma, uh, unhealthy, visceral fat, um, comma heart attacks, comma strokes, uh, you'll find out uh, just how bad visceral fat is. But uh, unfortunately, <laughs> this, these two individuals found out that they have a lot of it. So they're um, what, what we would call tofi, so thin on the outside. So if you looked at them, they really wouldn't look that fat to you in real life. Uh, heavy even, you'd think they're actually in good shape. Um, but they're filled with visceral fat inside. So thin outside, fat inside, tofi. So question, um, if you think you're healthy, take a look at yourself in a mirror and you say, wow, I'm not doing nearly as bad as everybody else. Well, maybe you're worse because you have more visceral fat. And as it turns out, people that are thin, that are tofis, they're worse off than people that are obese and have a lot more metabolic fat. Uh, I'm sorry, a lot more sub-Q fat. This is the weight up here, sub-Q fat. So if you're mostly sub-Q fat, you're a lot better off than somebody who is mostly visceral fat. So you don't want to have that. And the only way to know is to get an MRI and take a look at what's going on inside. You can also do it by CT. I prefer MRI because there's no ionizing energy. But many people have already had a CT and they can go back and reread um, their CT to see how much visceral fat they have. It has to be reread because guaranteed it was not read the first time. No for visceral fat anyway. They read for everything else to make money off you, but they did not read it for this important biomarker, which you most, most people um, have pretty large concerning amounts and they would stand to benefit from getting it. So um, a few things to point out, we'll go through some anatomy, the body, this vertebral body, so this is a backbone. This is, these are kidneys here on the right. This is the left and this is the right kidney. And the, these are the psoas muscles, these two dark structures um, that make, they make up your core. And this right here is again, the vertebral body, your backbone. So on the right and left of the, the back are your psoas muscles, your core, and then your oblique muscles and deposit with the obliques, you can see uh, inflammatory fat and this visceral fat. So. Um, let's just scan up a little bit and we'll see that um, this is the colon, transverse colon coming up, and this is a little bit of liver, this is the ascending colon, um, and we can see as the liver is merging as we're going up higher, um, that uh, there's still persistence of visceral fat. So visceral fat is pretty uniformly distributed within the abdomen. So where there's space, it gets accumulated. It doesn't like stick around in one pocket and accumulate in one area. It's distributed pretty uniformly throughout. So the take home point uh, for this person is they have a lot of visceral fat. Now, I wanna share with you in this video some other fat besides visceral fat that's important to talk about. I've mentioned it before in the past, but as we're getting up higher in the liver, now we're seeing the lung fields, okay? So these, this darkness emerging in here is um, darkness is where there's air, that's, that's the lungs. And now we're starting to see the heart, okay? So this is the heart, but there's visceral fat here. And look, look what's surrounding uh, the heart is this fat. Um, so this uh, pericardial or cardial fat. So it's a combination of pericardial fat and epicardial fat collectively, heart fat. And it's surrounding, it's the, the heart is encased with this 
envelope of highly inflammatory fat. So we don't go all the way up to, to, to see it, unfortunately. It, it stops at this particular level to see, uh, see how it is. But we can, um, when you come and work with me, I try to get my clients to get scanned. As, uh, and uh, we can do a dedicated heart scan to look up power. But this individual, um, I wasn't anticipating to be this bad, but this is, this is badness. What's interesting about uh, heart fat is its uh, influence is less systemic. It's more... Uh, localized but that's bad because guess where it is it's around your heart so it tends to cause inflammation in the heart and it's associated with localized atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease with the coronary arteries that are on the outside uh, lie uh, outside of the heart which makes it easier to get to for um, surgeons to to do a bypass graft but uh, unfortunately it means it get, has exposures to this fat that surrounds it so this is really bad so the take home point is we see correlation between <clears throat> visceral fat and heart fat. So you do not want this inflammatory dangerous fat surrounding your heart um, and you do not want this dangerous visceral fat around here. But they, they almost always correlate. Now sometimes they're a little bit off. Um, I see maybe a little bit um, more visceral fat fat uh, and a little bit less pericardial fat in women but we are who are premenopausal but we tend to see that in um, in general that women live longer and healthier up until when they reach um, menopause then they start catching up with visceral fat and 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 then heart fat starts accumulating too so this guy got a bad report but he was so glad, so grateful that he came up. And uh, I asked if I could have permission to use his scan to be able to instruct people because I was very surprised at just how bad he was. So how bad was he? This is like the worst 40 year old um, I've seen. So super bad. This is really, really bad. I feel a lot of visceral fat. He's a topi. And so he's got a lot of work to do. Uh, but again, he's he's going to have the most improvement. So his return on his investment effort coming to work with me is going to be considerably higher than somebody who doesn't have a lot of visceral fat. So we will rescan him in about three months, um, commensurate with his uh, degree of motivation. We are going to see considerable change in sight, so stay tuned um, uh, about that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at... Uh, some other images, one other person that came um, also to see me yesterday uh, who had the exact same uh, sequence of scans. We're gonna take a look at him. Now, he's uh, almost about the same age. He's two years younger. And so we'll, we'll start off looking at uh, his, uh, his abdomen. And look, 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 look. He's filled with visceral fat too. So um, he is a, a tofi, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. He's only 38. And uh, his story is, um, the first one I forgot to say, he had, he had a lot of stress and a lot of uh, um, uh, stressful eating, eating unhealthy foods, coping, coping, cope, uh, coping with his stress by eating unhealthy foods. And he also admitted to, uh, sadly, um, drinking a, a lot of whiskey because he was told whiskey doesn't have carbohydrates. Well, um, you know, if you're, if you're following me, listen, you know, just because something doesn't have carbohydrates doesn't mean that uh, you should drink it. Uh, hard liquor is taxing on your liver, and your liver is, is pertinent and incredibly um, important to your metabolic health. So don't drink hard liquor, certainly not in uh, quantities. If you're drinking it uh, frequently, you uh, risk ruining the state of your health. And so I see... Um, time and time again uh, in clients that drink hard liquor um, and, I, and I'm you know uh, uh, more than just like say uh, once every six months for a camping trip to the boundary waters in, in Canada with some some of your friends or something um, we're, we're talking more on regular use of hard liquor the more you use it the more you're going to uh, contribute to visceral fat and declining health so I just recommend my clients, um, honestly, they're healthier, not drinking liquor. I wouldn't touch a drop of it myself, but it's up to you. You guys decide how, um, how you live your life, but, um, you know, have the courage uh, to get an MRI scan, see what's going on. See if you've got a problem. Do not do something uh, and ignore it. Um, 
And your doctor, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do an MRI scan. They're not gonna do a CT scan and read your visceral fat. They'll do a CT scan on you and read other things that they think, you know, in the system thinks probably most accurately is they're gonna make money. But this guy, um, 38, his, his client, um, second, second study, second uh, and, and second one of the day, he was filled with visceral fat, and his story was he was a distance runner. He ran long distance from high school up to about a year ago, and um, so and had hit, had his share of carbohydrates, and so he was filled with visceral fat. And I see this a lot in runners. A lot of runners, uh, you know, will, will distance runners will eat a lot of carbs, and a lot of them migrated away from carbs now in keto, uh, uh, healthy fats. Uh, to, to try to become ketogenic, but um, nonetheless, oftentimes uh, consumption, long-term consumption of carbohydrates and distance running uh, is fueling the fire of lots of investment in visceral fat. Now, I suspect uh, had we scanned him a year ago, he'd be in worse shape because now he is sprinting and uh, we'll see his, his uh, visceral fat uh, disappear shortly. Uh, so, uh, his story again, or his uh, his oblique show again, fatty deposition. Uh, his um, uh, psoas are um, pretty good. They're better than the the first one, um, but uh, they could be better. And uh, um, just a huge amount of visceral fat in there in this transverse colon. And uh, we're going to scan up now. Um, and go higher and higher and let's take a look at his heart okay so we want to see um, again if there's any uh, fat or uh, heart fat around uh, here's his liver coming into view and um, this spleen disappearing now and we now see uh, the heart coming in right here okay so we see again uh, MRIs fat shows up as white and we see this layer of of highly inflammatory fat uh, surrounding that heart. So you don't want to have um, this inflammatory fat around your heart. You want to have a heart that's free of that. So um, both these guys are topies. Uh, they have a lot of visceral fat. Now I thought it might be fun to show the good doctor's MRI. So you know I'm up here talking a lot and you know I profess expertise and specialty on um, visceral fat and how to get rid of it. Uh, what does my own scan look like? Well, let's let's take a look at my my latest abdominal MRI. And uh, of course, those guys were 38 and 40 years old. I'm 59. So let's take a look. We'll scan through my abdomen, my kidneys, my liver, my gallbladder, my transverse colon, and I just don't have much of that white stuff in there. You see. Um, I'm 59 years old, but I am, you know, a humility, humility aside, okay, and I believe I'm one of the best in the world at getting rid of visceral fat, so I better have low amounts of fat if I profess to be an expert at getting rid of it. So I have really nice obliques, I'm sorry, uh, Adonis rectus, my muscles are nice and healthy, um, very, very um, low amounts of uh, visceral fat in there, and I don't have much subcutaneous fat, so I look pretty good in my pictures. I don't show myself too much, but occasionally I do from time to time. And uh, now let's go up a little bit higher and take a look at my heart. Okay, so we'll see how my heart looks relative to my visceral fat. And so we're going, this is the liver, we're starting to get up there's my heart coming into view, and we now see my heart. And look, there is like almost, you know, no, there's a teeny tiny bit of uh, fat around my heart, but um, you don't know, look not, like nothing, okay? So again, um, the visceral fat tells the story about your health and it's told and revealed throughout your whole body. So um, the, you, you want to, of course, if you have these scans and you, you had low visceral fat and you had heart fat, and you heart a uh, very low heart fat, you'd feel really good about that. And I do. I feel fantastic. They don't like that. So I'm 59 and um, I've been scanning myself for a long time. I know what I got to do to get rid of visceral fat, get rid of pericardial fat, get rid of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, get rid of chronic disease because I've been studying it. 
health optimization for 13 years and got a lot of research experience doing it. So anyway, I wanted to show you that it's not really age, it's disease, okay? So if you age and you don't have disease, you're not, you know, if you haven't made poor lifestyle choices, you're not gonna have disease. So fortunately for these guys, they had a course direction, okay? They now understand, they see that they've had problems and they're 38 and 40 years of age and they're going to, I told them yesterday, they're going to look better than me at age 59 because I didn't get started on this until age of 48. So if you're listening today, um, please consider getting an MRI scan and take a look at what you got inside of you to make sure you don't have a lot of visceral fat and uh, also uh, get a, a scan of your heart to see if you have an encasement of fat around your heart or not so you can be assured. I get a lot of people on social media commenting, he's thin, I'm thin, I don't have visceral fat. Well, how do you know? Uh, you know, uh, don't rely on DEXA scan. It's not nearly as accurate as an MRI or these bioimpedance scales or you touch things or your feet sit on something and uh, try to make an assessment of visceral fat. It's too daggone important. So spend the money, get an MRI. Uh, if you're really motivated, you want to work with me. Uh, you can go to my website, www.drsean.com and find out how you can make sure you don't have heart fat and you don't have visceral fat. Now keep in mind, I'm going to kick your tires to make sure, one, I'm a good fit for you because chances are you could probably work with somebody um, and, uh, and in your local area um, if you're just a beginner. Uh, or kind of modest in your approach to health because uh, you, you probably don't need a big gun like me. But if you are um, really motivated and you want, you get it, you're an early adopter and you say, you know what, my body is going to, uh, my body is my most important physical asset and it corresponds to, the, its condition corresponds to the level of enjoyment I'm going to have in my health and I am for darn sure I don't want to have a heart attack or a stroke or end up in diapers or have dementia or get cancer. Um, I want to look good. I want to live well as long as possible. Then maybe you would be a good fit to work with me and we can discuss that. So <clears throat> anyway, I hope you've learned um, from this little video and I'll look forward to doing some other videos on uh, important biomarkers and biometrics for health and what you should pay attention to. It's not cholesterol, it's visceral fat, pericardial fat, fat around the heart. Uh, it's also uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and we'll get into this a little bit more. So as always, I welcome comments, I welcome questions. And please, if you know somebody that you care about, why not uh, forward this video to them so they can be aware of this and uh, be scanned. In most cases, you get these MRI scans for around 500 to uh, say a thousand dollars on the high side uh, easily should average around seven hundred fifty dollars so money well spent and if you cringe at that kind of money well I'm sorry um, you know these these MRIs are expensive they're not cheap machines so maybe you just need to um, find a more economic metric and maybe you'll just have to work with a DEXA scan which is a hundred dollars cheaper but you've got to see you got to see visceral fat. If you can't see that visceral fat, you're just not going to be bothered about it. Um, question, has anyone ever gotten a DEXA scan and changed their life? No, because it just is a number. But when you get an MRI scan, you can go and look at all these muscle, muscle to fat ratios, see how much visceral fat you have, and a large number does not move you as much as seeing a huge amount of visceral fat. So uh, consider uh, getting those, those MRI scans and uh, this, the second thing I like to talk about, if you like this video, give it a like. And I, I really appreciate getting some more likes so I can get more viewers, more followers, because my passion is to try to reverse chronic disease in our country. So the more I get video content out there, get in front of people, the better chance I have to do this. And uh, if you're listening and you uh, are really impressed with this content, you want to try to promote it, I want to create videos to get in high school. Yeah, I, I'm not very good at these videos, you know, I, but if I could hire somebody to help me do a better job, I'd like to produce videos and content for high schools, junior highs, elementary schools, teach kids about health optimization and that their bodies are their most important physical asset, what to pay attention to, 
and to help out the military, help out first responders, help out the marginalized in society, to teach them what they have to do to become healthy, give them better opportunities by improving their health, give them more knowledge about that. So if this appeals to you, uh, why not consider giving me a donation to my 501c3? You can contact me about that. Um, I'm sorry, I still don't have that website out there, but I'm a one-man band, and guess who's funding it? It's all Sean O'Mara, because I haven't had a single donor yet. Maybe it's because I suck, um, or people just aren't very charitable. I'm not sure what it is, but um, you know, unless the money right now is going to uh, lawyers and accountants and setting this all up, and uh, so it is a costly venture, and I've lost a lot of money, put a lot of money into charity. So, but it's all good, because um, I feel strongly about it, and that's why I do it. If you feel strongly about it, consider donating to my, my charity to get in touch with me, and I'd love to uh, have your support. All right, well, thank you very much, and uh, again, if you like this content, give it a like and subscribe. Hit the alert button so you can get, uh, get the alerts uh, when I produce something sent to you right away. All right, well, thank you very much, YouTube. Look forward to uh, producing some more content for you. Dr. Sean out.